Hello friends, welcome to the lecture series on botany. Today we are discussing which area? It is important features and life history. Which area is a single genus of family which area is phylum xanthophyta, the later commonly known as yellow green algae. Let us start with the important features of which area. Which area presently comprise of about 276 species which occur abundantly in the temperate regions of the world. Majority of these are found in terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems as a few species are marine like Vocheria pyloboloids. The terrestrial species form extensive yellowish or deep green dense covering of mat on wet soil and in flower pots in greenhouses commonly known as water fat. Two widely distributed species are Vocheria sicilis and Vocheria geminata. Vocheria sicilis occurs both on land and in water while is Vocheria uncinata is aquatic and Vocheria amphibia is amphibious. Thallus structure. The thallus is composed of yellowish green cylindrical coarse filaments branched at irregular intervals. In terrestrial species, the thallus is attached to the substratum by small tufts of colorless rhizoids or a lobed haptiron. The aerial filaments possess monopodial branching and apical growth. As there is no septa or cross walls, the protoplasm is continuous along its entire length. Septa occurs only during injury and formation of reproductive structures. The filament is weak, thin and inelastic. It consists of an inner layer of cellulose and outer layer of pectic substances. Inside of the cell wall, there is a layer of cytoplasm containing cell organelles. The chromatophore contains chlorophyll A, chlorophyll E, keratinides, it lacks chlorophyll B, pyrenides are almost absent. The reserve of food is oil or fat and gets stored within the cytoplasm in the form of countless droplets. In Vocheria, cytokinase is not followed by mitosis, so the thallus has xenocytic nature. In Vocheria, plastids can change their orientation in response to change in light levels. In Vocheria, chloroplasts along with small vesicles and mitochondria move with the streaming of cytoplasm along with longitudinal axis of the filament in dark. Cytoplasmic fibrillus have been reported in the family of Vocheria litoria. The photoreceptors of light oriented moment of chloroplast are present in the cytoplasm rather than in the chloroplast. Vocheria is an acellular organism. It is wrong. To call Vocheria as a unicellular organism, it possesses all the features of multicellular organism. Also, in unicellular forms, growth consists of an increase in size of the entire cell. However, in Vocheria, growth is apical. Therefore, it is appropriate to call Vocheria in general as an acellular synocytic organism rather than a unicellular or multicellular form. Now, we have the second part of our lecture that is life cycle of Vocheria. Vocheria reproduces by three methods, vegetative, asexual and sexual. Let us start with the vegetative reproduction. It takes place through fragmentation. In this method, the thallus breaks up externally into short segments which ultimately form new individuals. Mm -hmm. 
in vocharia a sexual reproduction takes place by different modes depending upon the habitat in which the alga lives in aquatic species it occurs by formation of zoospores terrestrial species form zoospores only when fledged zoospore formation it is the commonest method of asexual reproduction in aquatic forms zoospores are large multinucleate and multifledged structures they are formed singly within elongated club shaped zoosporangia which develop at the end of side branch the zoosporangia get swollen into a club shaped structure the entire protoplast of the zoosporangium contracts to form an oval multinucleate mass the incipient zoospores the mature zoospores escape through a narrow aperture which is formed by the gelatinization of the wall of the distal end of the zoosporangium now the morphology of zoospores the multinucleate and multifledged zoospores are peculiar to which area all other genera related to it produce small by fledged uninucleate zoospores developed in large numbers in each zoosporangium the zoospores are compound structure formed as a result of the failure of protoplast within the zoosporangium to divide into uninucleate bifledged zoospores thus it may be more appropriate to term it as a syn zoospore a view supported by two facts number 1 presence of the central vacuole of the parent zoosporangium and Number second, period disposition of the flagella opposed the nuclei. Now the germination of zoospores. After a period of five to fifteen minutes of sluggish movement, the zoospores compressed, flagella becomes motionless and then vanish completely. The zoospores round off and becomes covered with a thin cellulose wall. at this stage the chromatophores move outwards and nuclei move inwards the zoospores then elongates in one or two opposed directions in the form of tubular outgrowths one of these undergo branching to form the colorless lobed hold fast while the other continues to grow indefinitely to produce the yellowish green tubular filaments another method of asexual reproduction is formation of aplanospores these are non motile asexual spores produced by the terrestrial species the aquatic species produce them only when the algae is exposed to drought or transferred from light to darkness or from running to settle water the aplanospores develop at the ends of short laterals or terminal branches in aplanosporangia the terminal aplanosporangia is cut off by septum from the branch the protoplast of the aplanosporangium is converted into a single rounded thin walled aplanospore which is liberated by the irregular rupture of the sporangial wall the single aplanospore produced within the aplanosporangia is set free through the apical pore formed by the dissolution of the sporangial membrane after liberation aplanospore germinates to give rise to a new thallus now the another method of asexual reproduction is formation of echinites in some aquatic and terrestrial species when exposed to greater desiccation or low temperature the branched filaments divide into row of short segments by thick gelatinous cross walls these resting multinucleate thick walled segments are known as the cysts or hyponospores or they are also called as echinites the cyst in a chain may remain connected by the parent membrane of the filament which appears like another alga gangrosira thus this stage of vocharia is also called gangrosira stage onset of favorable conditions for growth 
the kinase directly grow into a new individual. Now, we have no sexual reproduction of Vucheria. All species of Vucheria reproduce sexually. It is Ugame style. Most of the species are monoecious, that is homothelic. They are exclusively freshwater or terrestrial forms. Species such as Vucheria dichotoma, which are marine, is dioecious, that is heterothelic. The male and female gametes differ greatly in size, form and structure. They are produced in the distinct and specialized sex organs. The male sex organ is called anthurium and female sex organ is, is ogonium. Position of sex organs. In the monoecious or homothelic species, the anthuria and ogonia usually occur close to one another. Eight intervals along the same filament arising as a lateral outgrowth. There is a great variation in the arrangement of sex organs in the different species or even different individuals of the same species. Let us start with the structure of sex organs. Anthridia. In which area, the mature anthridium is a cylindrical tubular structure strongly covered like a horn. In some cases, it is a straight. The young anthridium contains cytoplasm, nuclei, and chloroplast. At maturity, it contains numerous male gametes or sperms, which in some species are liberated through a single aperture and in others through several apertures. The liberated sperm is an extremely minute oval spindle shepherd or pear shepherd colorless structure with two laterally inserted and opposite flagella of unequal length. The short one points forwards and long one points backwards. Now, ogonium. The ogonium is a spherical or wide structure which usually appears sessile or subsessile. It is separated from the supporting filament by a cross wall at its base and develops a short rounded beak at the tip towards maturity. The mature ogonium contains a single large nucleus located in the center and numerous chromatophores. Reserve food is stored in the form of oil droplets. The protoplasmic contents surround off to form a single large egg cell or womb. Now, fertilization. Both the sex organs open almost simultaneously, the ogonium a little before the anthridium. The anthridia and ogonia situated close together may be his almost same time or either of them may open from a few minutes, minutes to two hours before the other dehises. At the tip of the beak of the ogonium, is formed a pore where from a colorless cytoplasm oozes out through the apical aperture. At this stage, the chromatophores and oil droplets move to the center of the ohm, which is surrounded by a colorless layer of lining cytoplasm. Several sperms emitted from the apical pore in the wall of anthridium gather around it. The small male nucleus lies near the female nucleus and increases in size until it has swollen to the nearly the same volume before it fuses with the female nucleus. A mimane is formed across the ogonial aperture after fertilization. The zygote becomes oospore after secreting several layers thick wall around itself. When the original wall gets decayed, the oospore gets liberated. It then undergoes a period of rest. The resting zygote contains a number of reddish or brownish 
bodies. Now the germination of ooze spore. After the dormant period, the ooze spore germinates directly into a new filament without the formation of meiospores. It is held that reduction occurs in the first nuclear division in the germinating ooze spore. In that case, the thallus is haploid. Now, according to Mundi, 1929, Wucheria thallus is diploid and meiosis occurs at the time of gamete formation. The thick ooze spore wall ruptures through the split emerges colorless germ tube or as a lateral outgrowth of the germ tube which forms the aerial system. Now, we have taxonomic position of Vocheria. The name Vocheria was first given by D. Kendall in 1805. Strain 1948 made a critical study of the pigment of a few species of Vocheria and came to the conclusion that they possess pigments characteristic of xanthophyce. On the basis of pigment constitution of Vicheria, Smith 1950 transferred this genus to class Xanthophyce. Many allergologists at present favor inclusion of family Vicheriaceae with single genus Vicheria in the class Xanthophyce. The arguments advanced in favor of this are number one, the absence of native cellulose in the filament wall. Number second, absence of chlorophyll B and presence of chlorophyll E in the zoo spores of Vucheria, a pigment characteristic of class Xanthophyce. Presence of keratinite pigments in excess of chlorophylls. Lake of two xanthophylls, siphonine and siphoxanthine which are of universal occurrence in the siphonales. Absence of pyrenides in the chromatophores. Oil and fat rather than starch is the principal for reserve. Presence of opposedly directed unequal flagella, a feature typical of motile cells of all xanthophyce. On the basis of these features, the inclusion of Vocheria in the class Xanthophyce has practically become a settled fact. Thus, according to the latest view, the systematic position of Vocheria is as follows. Division Xanthophyta, class Xanthophyce, order Heteriosiphonales, family Vocheriaceae, genus Vocheria. Now, before we conclude, let us have a look on affinities of Vocheria. In siphonaceous, cenocytic acellular organization of the thallus, photosynthetic pigments, discoid chloroplast, cell wall composition, flagella morphology of motile cells, and principal food reserve. Vucheria indicates relationship with other members of the xanthophyce. The multinucleate, accepted thallus and oogame sexual reproduction are the features in which Vucheria resembles the green algae. Now, in cenocytic nature of the thallus, chemical composition of the cell wall and oogame in the sexual phase, Vucheria exhibits a striking resemblance with the oomycetes, the discovery of tin cell and whiplash type of flagella in the motile stage of Vucheria is indicative of the mycomycetes having been derived from Vucheria like in sisters. So friends, I hope that you might have understood the important features and life history of Vucheria. See you with a new topic. Till then, goodbye.